Good morning, everyone. Thanks for joining us. Uh, those that are joining us live and, and those that are watching this uh, here uh, later this week. Uh, my name is Jason Williams. I'm the Managing Director with Society of Innovators and excited to welcome Joel Amy Bender here with Mindbender's game, Puzzles and Games in Whiting, Indiana. This is part of our 2020 uh, gift guide uh, to highlight gifts for innovators. And today specifically, we're looking at games that innovators play. Uh, Mindbender Games, uh, if you're not familiar, uh, actually was recently named the Emerging Small Business of the Year during the Indiana Small Business Development Center's annual E-Day Awards program, or the ISBDC's E-Day. Uh, so obviously a great little shop in downtown Whiting, Indiana. Mindbender's Puzzles and Games uh, carries a wide selection of logic games, brain teasing puzzles, strategy games, 3D puzzles, learning aids, early development games, and Rubik's Cubes, as well as science, engineering, and robotics toys. So perfect for STEM and play. And Joel, I, I welcome, and I love this quote uh, when you were speaking with the Northwest Indiana Times, just saying that people are looking for different ways of stimulating the mind that don't involve computers. So our, our games are brain power. And that's uh, certainly one thing that caught our attention, right, is we're highlighting different games for innovators or games that kind of fuel innovation-related skills. So you write problem-solving, logic, creativity, critical thinking. Uh, that's really what we're all about today is trying to highlight some games. We're going to have Joel uh, run through a, a variety of games. But I, I guess first, Joel, if you just want to introduce yourself and, and uh, the store briefly before we dive into looking at some games this morning. Sure. My name is Joel Bender, um, owner, co-owner of Mindbender's Puzzles and Games here in Whiting, Indiana. Me and my wife opened the shop in 2016. We've been here for four and a half years. This is our fifth Christmas. Um, we, we, when we put this store together, we wanted to make sure that, you know, you, you're, it's a, it was a, like a learning store, but, you know, also, you know, problem solving. People wanted to come in. We didn't want to do any computer. We don't do any guns, bombs, or anything like that. Uh, pretty wholesome games, but, you know, everything was using your mind. Um, we opened up and it was a whirlwind because we kept finding the unusual things that weren't in the big box. Um, so no computers, no cell phones. Um, a lot of things that you see in here, you're probably not going to see any place else. Um, we take pride in going to some shows and finding unique things that will fit right in our store. Um, again, so many different things, so many different ways of play we didn't know about, but we know about now. And we're just, it's, it's a fun little thing we like doing. Perfect. And again, right, we're, we're talking today because we know, you know, for, with our work at the site of innovators that, that board and card games, you know, can be key tools in developing essential innovation related skills, as we mentioned some of those uh, a few minutes ago. Uh, but board games are also a big business. Uh, you know, the uh, According to the Global Outlook and Forecast Report by the board games market, the market size for board games is expected to reach over $12 billion by 2023. So have have you experienced that? Obviously, you've been in business four years, but now during this this year of, of quarantine and now this holiday season, and what, what are you seeing as far as interest in, in the games that you guys are selling? Sure. I, so, so you're on your cell phone, you're on your computer for work, for school, a lot of Zoom meetings. You're always staring at the screen. So, you know, us being screen free, you know, hey, let's bring back the family game. Let's bring back, you know, puzzles and games. Puzzles were on fire during the, uh, during the pandemic because people were trying to find things that, you know, get the mind going. The puzzles work both sides of your brain. Um, but family games too, you know, you're, you're sitting there, you're texting your friends back and forth. You bring a family game home and you can sit around the table. You're, you're making a memory. Your social as I social is, you know, your socialization skills, you know, get a little better because you're actually communicating with each other. And there's so many different depths of games. I mean, there's some strategy, some luck, and then there's some cooperative games that we're all working together to get to the, solve the problem. And those games, the cooperative games actually started four years old and go all the way to adult. I mean, some of the gamers games now, like Settlers of Catan and, and the other games like Ticket to Ride, there's millions upon millions of sold, but people really don't know about them. So we, we take pride and joy in showing, all right, this is something you haven't seen. This is something, you know, we try to listen to what people are at looking for and we, you know, try to match it with the personality and play that game with them. Yeah, perfect. Thank you for that. Uh, and so I guess with that, you, you mentioned, you know, games from four all the way through adults. Let's uh, let's look at some games. So uh, we're, we're going to be getting together twice. Uh, so this is our first of two sessions with Mindbenders. Uh, and today we are going to focus on games specifically for uh, children, really uh, all ages. So from, you know, toddlers all the way to some older teenagers. And again, the, the goal today was to really look at games that 
that are not only fun to play, so, you know, good family games uh, for the holiday season and our continued weeks and months of, of quarantine, but also games that do a good job of flexing some of those creative muscles, those innovation or entrepreneurial skills, if you will, as far as problem solving and, and social skills and creativity. Uh, so, yeah, Joel, I think we were going to start kind of going from youngest to oldest today. So uh, I, I see a cube here. What, what do we have to just kick things off with? So most games have a die with it. So might as well start off with a die and learn how to play with a die. So what happens on this game, it's colors. So you're going to learn colors. This game starts at 18 months. It's a teacher preschool favorite. So what happens with it, you roll the dice and it comes up green. So if it comes up green, you grab there's six cards on the table. And the green says, mew, ma, mew. <laughs> meow like a cat. Meow. <laughs> so then it goes to the next one. So it's going to work with emotions, colors, shapes. Things that you're, you know, you're learning at, at that age, which is great. I mean, each one of them is different. Play peekaboo. All right, let me see you play peekaboo. If you're rolling, you know, you're rolling a dice and you're just finding the colors. Great tool for teachers, parents to work with their kids. You know, you're trying to get them to talk when at, at an earlier age. So it just gets them critically thinking about that too. Perfect. Yeah, so, uh, and you said good, good for teachers and certainly then uh, parents or relatives with, uh, with younger uh, toddlers, right? Right, and, you know, the, the toddler's not going to work on this one by himself, but you, if the parents play with them or the teachers play, it's, it's a great game for that. I mean, it's, you know, it's your, it, we call it your child's first game where you're actually rolling the die and you're picking the color and stuff like that. Yeah, fantastic. So, yeah, well, would we have something next? This game is a logic thinking game. So what happens is you have all these fun shapes and colors. 48 challenges. You open up the book and the first challenge is that. So where does the orange one go? So you're looking at it. Where does the orange one go? And I'm looking here. <laughs> so it's hand eye coordination. It's planning to put it out there. But it gets a little trickier, too, because if you see the face, it's a smiling face, and there's two different faces here. So you have to figure out it's a smiley face, it's a frown face, it's upside down, and trying to put it where it belongs. This game gets really good because after you learn all your shapes and colors, dun, da, 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 let's try it at nighttime. Now we take all the colors away, and now you're just working with the shapes. All right, <laughs> nice. so Which what's is, the name of this one? This one's called day and night. So when you're doing the ones in color, it's during daytime. You know it at night? It is nighttime. You nighttime. do it without Perfect. the shade of colors. <laughs> but it's just a matter of, and I'm sure I didn't build it right. <laughs> but, but it's good hand-eye coordination, learning your colors and shapes. Yeah, fun. And what have you found kind of the ideal ages for this one? Well, when this game first came out, it was for three and up. And we were finding two-year-olds were able to do it. But now it's it's on neck recommended for two and up. Okay. Fantastic. Now let's let you keep uh, chugging along. I know we've got a, a list. Of <laughs> this is a brand new game from Smart. What happens on this one is called Jack and the Beanstalk. So the object is to get your beanstalk all the way up to the edge. This book, this game comes with a nice book that you can tell the story of Jack the Beanstalk. But it also comes with, I believe, 48 challenges. So if you can see on the challenge card, it tells you where to get start the beanstalk. Well, this one's great because when you start your beanstalk, you start at the top. You grab a, there's a bunch of cards, a bunch of tiles here. So you get the tile and you start. And I'm not going to do it right because I can't see it. But you're going to start with the piece. And it's going to fall straight down. And you're going to keep going with the next one. And you're going to try to connect the beanstalk. So what you're doing is learning spatial planning. Try to figure out where it is. You push it out, and you're going to have to start all over. Because you're going to have to eventually stack all the beanstalk so they make the trail all the way up to the top to get to the castle, to get the goose with the magic eggs. <laughs> Nice. Yeah, I've got uh, my our three year old at home loves playing with the Connect Four more, more just as a you know purely a toy <laughs> right. rather than the game. But it looks like some elements there, and even that fun kind of cascading down of the tile. Right, and that's the thing. You, you you're watching it cascade down, but then you there's four ways to put the block in there, and you're trying to connect those two together. And 
Oh, I did it on that side. <laughs> yeah. That one looks like a lot of fun. Great game. It just came out. Blue Orange. I mean, not Blue Orange. Uh, Smart Games makes great games. You know, they change it up all the time on these games. And this one's one of my, like I said, just came out, so it's one of my favorites. Okay, and again, Jack of the Beanstalk was the name of the game. Jack of the Beanstalk. It's for yeah. it's for it. It says four to seven years on it, but I got through all of them in four months. <laughs> right, and then Smart Games is the name of the uh, the company. It's Smart Games is the name of the company. Okay, Perfect. this is a blue orange game. <laughs> what happens on this one is. This one's great for if you have a child that's, you know, just not talking yet or trying to, you know, just start to form words. What happens on this game is you deal out five, six cards. And what happens is you're going to tell a story. So I get my cards. I look at it and I say, once upon a time, there was a happy couple. <laughs> who, and you look through these cards, who took a train ride across the country to see the beautiful waterfalls. But they were not happy because they seen a lot of rubbish of banana peels everywhere. <laughs> and then, <laughs> um, so they mixed up a magic potion. You know, just like that, you're just using the cards to tell the story. Um, it's, it's a great game for trying to get your child to speak, talk, you know, it's in your imagination play, you know. Some of the stories, sometimes they make sense, sometimes they don't make sense. But it's a fun game and interacts with the child. You know, again, getting that socialization again. Yeah, fun. And uh, it came in a little tin. What was the name of that game again? That one's called Tall, Tall Tales, and that's from Blue Orange Games. Tall Tale by Blue Orange Games. Perfect. Mm -hmm. um, let's go this one. This is another logic game. for This one's for six and up. I know. Yeah, and what's the name of this one, Joel? This one's called invasions of the cow snatchers so what happens is you have all these colorful cows and it tells you where to put the fences it tells you where to put the fences it tells you where to put the cows so if i follow the piece like this and like that and like this we put the lid back on and then we set up the card exactly the way it goes so there's walls in here the green wall you can only get one cow over the red wall, you can't get any cows over. So you have to take your UFO, and it's a magnet, and you're going to have to pick up all the cows, but the red cow always has to be last. So the correct way to do this one would be grab the yellow over the wall, boom, slide it out, and then you would see that you are correct. Yellow, blue, red. Boom. Number one, very easy. This one has 60 challenges on it, so the walls with different sizes. So for an example, sometimes you get the red one, on this side, where if you pick this up, you go over, you can't make it back over the wall. So you're going to have to start over. So you're going to have to critically think, how can I get, hey, <laughs> how do I get that red one and all of them connected? The correct way would be go all around, pick up the blue one first, go over the wall that you can get one over, boom, back around and connected. Hey, I got an extra one. But <laughs> that's how you play this one. The great thing about this one, it might say six and up. I'll tell you what, I had so much trouble with this one. Because um, later the last 20, they have crop circles. So the crop circles go down. And what you do is when you lift up the cow, you can put it back down on the crop circle and come back and pick up another cow and bring it on over. Okay. <laughs> to get the red one to be last. I loved it. I mean, I was... In something to do on my downtime, I probably played every one of these puzzles. <laughs> Some of them taking me a day to figure out. Yeah, but, that's you know, great. Well, problem solving, thinking. <laughs> perfect. And and I guess I, what, what stands out to this one uh, for me is, right, there's so many of these, you know, apps. And the, the point here is to be analog and getting off our phones. But, right, all these apps, you know, maybe sliding the doors or the walls to get pieces out. And very similar, right? The, yes. Yeah, you know, some of these apps that maybe we, we just – mindlessly you know scroll through but this really is more hands-on and it gets you thinking and, and probably more in a social environment than uh than, than an app on your phone or or ipad yeah, well, <laughs> for a kid. when you're playing on your phone you don't get that touchy feely that sensory thing which which a lot of sensory things are are pretty much popular now the does and the putties and and the foam and the fluff and everything else it's all touchy and every when the kids come in they go oh this is so satisfying to play with this so you're missing that, I think, when you're when you're on your phone, you don't get that, you know, sensitivity of touching. 
Yeah. Perfect. That one looks fun. And again, that was, that was called Invasion of the Cow Snatchers, correct? Invasions of the Cow Snatchers. Okay, yeah. We're going to have to put together a list of all these games to, uh, to share. So. This is a nice family game. Well, it gets nice until you guys start arguing. But this is a dexterity QBs. game. Yeah. QBs. So what happens on QBs is you get a card. Actually, you get three cubes. I can get them out of here. You get three cubes, and you're going to try to make that face on here. So what happens is you get that face, and you look around. Oh, this one's going to be easy. So tooth, boom, and the eye. Boom. See it? I don't know if my camera is like that. Okay. So what you do is there's 54 cards. So there's different challenges. You're going to get different color cards. Cards there, and boom. So it's a race. You get four players playing that at the same time, trying to get to see to make the face on it. So it's great for hand-eye coordination, thinking, problem solving, and it's a great little family game. Kids love it because they're like monster faces, and yeah, you know. And that's cuties from Blue Orange Games. Okay. <laughs> Mine. Are we ready with any questions on that one? <laughs> no, no. I think that that one's pretty self-explanatory. It looks a lot of fun. Yes. This one is a great little game. So people love gnomes. Or we're going to Santa time. It's Christmas time. We're going to call them Santa's elves. Yep. So, <laughs> this is a great cooperation communication game. And what's what happens is you show? see a maze on both sides. On both sides. What happens is, we're going to put it like this way just for now. You can see maybe, I'm trying to show it right there. So what happens is you chose a card. Boom, it comes up number three. You find where number three is. They're not allowed to see each other. So what happens is two players will put it on three, and this person puts his on three, and they stay. So they're magnetic down there. So then now the next thing is, I'm going to put it this way so you can see. So what happens now is you're going to rescue the queen's treasures. So what happens is the gnomes are going to get the treasures by finding the treasures by getting the card, and it says the saber, dra the dragon's tooth. So you look for the dragon tooth and find out whose side the dragon tooth is on. So I would start the timer and I'm trying to get as many cards as I can. So I have the dragon on my side. So I'm going to say, I'm going to move my gnome because I can no move my gnome to where the walls are. So then I would ask my opponent, not my opponent, but the person I'm working with, can you go down? Can you go left? Can you go right? And eventually if I turn it this way, no, I can't go either way. So I'm going to go back over here. So they move it that way. So now I am moving my guy. All right, I'm going to move this way. Can you go down? So then you flip it around, and he can go down. So he goes to here. So you're working with each other. Can you make? Could you go right? Can you go left? And eventually, you're going to make it all the way to the dragon, the dragon's tooth. Next thing you know, you flip over the next card. Who's got the treasure map? So I don't have the treasure map on this side. This person says I have the treasure map. So what they do is they make it. Oh, they're right there. So they go, boom, I got the treasure map. All right, next card, the potion. Well, I don't have the potion on this side, so I look and their magic potion is up. So when this potion goes up as far as they can, and they say, can you help me at all? Can you go to the left or to the right? Nope, I can't go either way, so I'm going to move over here. Now can you go up? Sure can. So I go up, and I move over as far as I can, and now can you move? Nope, they can't move. Can you go up? Sure, can you go up? And then the other person, can you make it to the right? You make it to the right. Oh, how about now? Can you go down? Nope, I can go here. And this person goes, I can go here. <laughs> can you go left? Sure, I go left. And you're making that person, okay, now I'm good. I can get the potion. Flip it over, you do the next card. Okay. This one, nice. the mazes are awesome, and it's communication. But there's four different ones. As you get, this is this is A, so there's four. So the, the mazes get smaller and smaller. And the faster you go, the more things you're going to get. And it's a great communication. You have to work together. It's a nice cooperation game. Uh, mine where Peaceful Kingdom makes great, great um, cooperation games where you're all working together to try to solve. Yeah, that's perfect. It reminds me of Battleship, of course. But then, like you right. said, kind of that, that cooperative <laughs> teamwork uh, that, you know, is super important to, uh, to help develop as well. And what was the name of that game? That one's Gnomes at Night very popular game um that, again made by peaceful kingdom 
You know, I thought about this other one from Peaceful Kingdom. This is for five and up, and I missed this game, and I love this game, and I not wanted to go back to it. So the Homes of the Night is for six and up. This one's for five and up. Again, a Peaceful Kingdom game. This is called Race to the Treasure. What happens on Race to the Treasure, you're trying to beat the ogre. I'm going to go backwards. You're going to try Race the Ogre to open the treasure chest. You get three keys. You roll your dice, and it says B3. You find a B and a three, and you put the key right on B3. You get all the keys down, and what happens here is you're racing the ogre. So you got a box full of cards. You pull it out, and if you get a trail, you start the trail right on there, and you're going to work your trail to pick up all the keys. So as you're going, as I'm trying to find an ogre. <laughs> I'm doing actually pretty good here. Uh, oh, an ogre. So what happens when you get an ogre, the ogre goes here. If you get ogres to the end of the game, before you get all the keys and make it to the end of the game, the ogres win. But if you make it there, the, the trail works. So it's problems. Oh, another ogre. So you're trying to get all you're connecting the trail together. So you're thinking about where the next piece is going to go. Sometimes you have to get rid of a piece and go the other way, but you're all working together as a team, which is a cooperative place. So one of your first games as a kid, you know, you don't want to always lose. You don't know, you know, so this is teaching the win or lose as a team. Um, again, peaceful kingdom makes great, great um, games. And it's, it's one of the, one of one of my favorites. Kids love it. There's a couple variations to it where it makes it a little tougher. You got to get four keys. Right. Um, there's an ogre snack box that you put a snack box in there. And if you get the snack box, it takes an ogre away because I don't see too many people winning this game all the time. I don't know if I just got bad luck. Or... <laughs> yeah, no, it, but, that, that looks great. So by, by Peaceful Kingdom, what was the name of this one? This one's called Race to the Rescue. Race to the Rescue. So this mm -hmm. one, again, collaborative, you said five and up, where you really see the map on the board in front of you. And then the, the progression from that was to the, uh, what was the, the other maze, maze game you showed? The other maze game? Oh, that was Gnomes, Gnomes at Night. So, so Gnomes at Night. So then you get to where it's collaborative, but you're blind a bit where you, you, know, you don't see the whole board all at once. So Right. Okay, good, good progression there by Peaceful Kingdom. Yes. So I'm going to go. This is one of my favorite games. This one won Game of the Year in 2015. And how, I, and how I explain it to kids because I see it. The Cub Scouts told me how to do it. So we're working with plutonium. So plutonium burns. Ah, so you're not allowed to touch it with your hands. So what happens is in order to move the plutonium, you're going to have to go back and forth until you get the right combination. What is the right combination? I know you're going to ask that. So what happens is you got the three. And your first puzzle is this. So what happens is you're going to try to make that. So mm -hmm. if I was going to do this one, I'd go this. And not too many people could beat me at this one because I've been doing it for four years. <laughs> <laughs> <Ta -da! laughs> so again, hand-eye coordination. You know, you're thinking of problem solving before you get the card. Okay, this one has to go on the bottom. This one has to go on top. Right. But they do get tougher. They're not just... And there's 54 cards you can then you can play. Okay, you got it. Now let's race to see who can get it back. <laughs> I'm doing it wrong. Get it back to normal. <laughs> Fantastic. And Dr. Eureka, is that the name of this one? It's called Dr. Eureka. This is 2015 game of the year. This is my giant version. This is my demo for giant. The normal size is this side with marbles. This is cheap plastic, this you know, flimsy. The other one hard plastic, durable. And then with marbles, because this one, you know, when the kids, we have the Cub Scouts come in all the time, Girl Scouts come right. in all the time, you know, just a little, little abuse and they get, they start sticking a little bit. That's why I love, I prefer the smaller one. That way we won't have that trouble. But like I said, 54 cards, 54 challenges, phenomenal by Blue Orange okay. Games. Fantastic. Um, let's do one more. This one's six years old. Let me take a quick drink. I got two more six-year-olds. So this one is my engineering game. This is QB Maze. Da -da -da! So it is a marble run. And what you do is you build it. They all snap together. They're easy. Snap. Put on there. Snap. You know, put it together. I built this yesterday. 
and I didn't want to go that way. <laughs> oh, I missed one. But again, nice engineering game. Kids love to play this. Parents don't like to step on them. They feel like Legos. But uh, <laughs> <laughs> but great innovating, you know, thinking outside the box. You have to, each piece is going to tell you. So some of them dictate it's only going to go out, you know, one way or it's going to drop straight down or it's going to, it's, one has a decision maker. It's going to go to the left or to the right. So it's, you know, you got to you got to solve the problem as you're engineering it. And then to make sure that everything else works, you know, if they're in each other's ways, they're definitely not going to be doing the spinny things. So it's a great game. Very popular with the kids. You know, they love the marble runs. Yep. Um, it's, and, and it's the replayability on it is great because, you know, you can go as far as much as you can imagine. Yeah. Well, so I get just to get building toy as well. <clears throat> yeah, and what was the name of that one, Joel? That one's called QB Maze. And that one comes in Maze. different sizes. We actually have one that lights up. As it goes through a rail, the light's right up on the rail with the thing. Okay. And, um, and Joel, at this point, it is is becoming clear. I, I can tell you opened this store just so you would have a, an unlimited <laughs> supply of games to play with yourself. I, I think. You're having too much fun. It, it is. It is true. Uh, you know, we <laughs> order games. We order games in March, and you're like it, the anticipation because when it comes out, they you know, hey, it came out, comes out in June or comes out in May. They always don't come out on when you get them. Yeah. When I get a Logic game, and whether it's three years old or, or eight years old or 12 years old, I, I will sit there and try to solve them all. I mean, some of them are just, I'm like, all right, I got to walk away and come back to it. But we have a lot of fun with them. You know, we bring a lot of games to our family's houses, you know, our family games. And, you know, even the two-player abstract games, which we'll get into in, in the next session, you know, just great, fun thinking games. Yeah, Fantastic. And I think you said you had one more game here, I think, uh, as we're kind of the younger crowd, so a final six and up game. Yep. Yeah. Oh, I don't know time. what time. I don't know what we have. Uh, we're at 9.30. So, yeah, we've got about okay. uh, we've got, gotten about the halfway point. Uh, so, I, you know, we've already ran through several. So, this is great. Oh. <laughs> so, I love this game, too. So, when you're getting that critical thinking, this is another one, six and up. Um, so, what happens on this one reminds me of Tetris. So what happens on this game, it tells you where to put the penguins. So there's 60 challenges. It tells you where to put the penguins. And once you get the penguins on there, if I make, make sure I do it right, because I don't want to sit here all day trying to figure it out. <laughs> How about upside down. All right. So what happens on this game is you got icebergs and you got penguins. And what you're going to try to do is try to get all the icebergs to fit on the, on the grid like it. Like a Tetris. So what happens on this one, and I know this by heart, so I don't look like a fool. Oh, oh I don't know what I are because it's messed up. Let's go this way. <laughs> I don't know what I did. I, I, I didn't, I'm doing it upside down, so you can't figure out. But you're trying to fit all the Tetris pieces on here, and eventually, um, I'm, now, I have to, now I have to do it right to show <laughs> that I can do it. Uh, <laughs> so there, 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 there. So when it's set up right, you got the four pieces. And what happens is fit all the icebergs on there. So one way or another. And voila. Gotcha. Icebergs are on there. 60 challenges when they're set up right, they're a little bit easier. Um, again, starts off easy, builds your confidence up a little bit as it gets a little bit tougher. You know, this is six and up. I guarantee that by the time you get to number 10 or 11, it's going to challenge any adult as much as it will a kid. <laughs> And the great yeah, thing about this that. is another smart, smart game. A lot of these games, they fold up, boom, put the lid on it, easy travel. I mean, the penguins are small, but if you put it all in there, they're easy to keep together. You know, sometimes, you know, putting it back in the box, but if you put it back in the tray, we find out the kids, you know, less likely to lose any pieces for it. Yeah, perfect. So great. That's a yeah, great lineup of uh... – of games we went from kind of toddler to, you know, call it the early elementary years. So now we'll, I guess, look at kind of elementary into middle school. Right. Elementary school. So this one's more eight and up. So I love this game. Uh, parents love this game. Teachers love this game. So, you know, this with the school aspect about it is, is the reading, reading and understanding what you're saying. So the comprehension. So this one is called cat crimes. Love, love this game except for me my wife and mom play and we're arguing which cat is guilty so on this one 
is you get a table. There's a table set up, and there's different things on a table. There's a birdcage, shoes, yarn, and stuff like that. And then you have six suspects. So on the six suspects, there are six cats, naughty cats. One of them's naughty. What happens is you are going to try to figure out where each cat is sitting on the table. So if I'm sitting, if this, uh, if Sassy is sitting in front of the shoes, Sassy sits here. So there are six seats around the table. So this is a nice deductive reasoning game, or you want to call it clue. So what you do is you read the clues. So puzzle number one says, who ruined the shoes? So you find the shoes on the table and you find out, put a little doodle on the shoes. And that's what you got to find out who is doodled on the shoes. So the first question says, Mr. Mittens and Pipsqueak were upstairs sleeping. So you find Mr. Mittens and Pipsqueak. We know they are not in this puzzle. So they are upstairs sleeping. So we put them upstairs. So we have four suspects left. Then we go to um, Tomcat was sitting in front of Catnip in a sock. So you look on the board, and there's a couple catnips. There's catnips here by the shoes. No sock. There's a sock by itself. There's catnip and a sock. So we find Tomcat, and we put Tomcat sitting by the catnip and the sock. So the next one says Sassy was sitting across from Tomcat. So across from, where is across from Tomcat? So directly across the table. Again, this is number one, a little bit easier. So we know where Sassy's sitting. Then it goes to the next one. Ginger is sitting next to the fishbowl. We find a fishbowl, we find that most people, adults and children, will try to put ginger in front of the fishbowl. But the card reads next to the fishbowl. So that means either here or here. So we're not too sure about ginger yet, so let's put ginger to the side. And the next one says, Duchess is sitting next to Sassy. I'm sorry, to the left of Sassy. So you figure out the left or right of Sassy, you find out Sassy is sitting in front of the shoes, which means Ginger can only be sitting next to the fishbowl on the other side. You found out where all fat, all the cats were sitting. Duchess is in front of the shoes. You turn over the card and says, oh, Duchess is the culprit. And then you look and see if all the other cats, sometimes they got Ginger next to the fishbowl, and they'll say, oh, I was wrong on that because I didn't know what next to what they were saying. So you're going to go left to the right, across from. It's, it's great thinking, you know, two seats away. So the deductive reasoning and, you know, you get that comprehension. You're reading, you know, you have to read, you know, you have to know what you're reading. You figure out what you're, how to play this game, which just makes, you know, if you're playing Clue, play by yourself, play with your family. It's, it's a great game. And then they came out with, this one was so great that they came out with another one called Dog Crimes. Different puzzles, different scenarios, but now they're doing dogs because as you find out, there's a lot more dog, or not more dog lovers, but there's a lot of dog lovers out there that, won't want to play a cat game and escape because they like they're a dog family. <laughs> yeah, for, well, depending on who you're talking to, they would tell you that all cats are guilty no matter what, or all dogs right. are guilty no matter what. So, <laughs> for, perfect. For, and that was called, it was again, uh, cat, uh, cat, crimes. cat crimes. And then is the other dog crimes is the, uh, is the other one? Dog crimes is their, is their culprit. Okay, so kind of a, a gateway to clue. I think you referenced that. Right. Well, you know, when you're playing clue, clue you're there. trying to figure out the suspect that's. You know, the people that like to problem solve and you think about it and, you know, it makes it great. And then, you know, you're making it with the animals and, you know, when you're when you're learning a game, you know, when you're, you know, you're reading, you don't realize that you're actually learning from the game. Like when you grew up, you know, you, we played Monopoly, you learned about money, you played Risk, you learned about geography. So these games are actually, they're fun games and they're teaching you as you go along. Right. I'm going to bring another one of those types of games up. This one is called Sherlock Express. This is a family game called Clue. This is for six and up, but I figured since we did cat crimes, we can do this one. So what happens is you get six suspects. So there's koala bears, there's tigers, and there's pandas. So what happens is you get alibis. So you these are alibis, and you're playing with three, four players, five players. And what happens is you're going to try to find the guilty party by using process of elimination. So what I do is I put, okay, I flip it over. This is my alibi. So my alibi says panda is innocent. So we take the two pandas out and there's four suspects left. The next person flips it over. Oh, panda again. What's the odds of that? And then <laughs> this person flips up and tigers. So tigers are up. But, you know, there's other things that can 
Um, so th there's other things on here that make them guilty or innocent. There's background. Oh, am I doing the right ones? Yeah. There's background. So this one's got a bookcase. This one has windows in the background. This one has forest in the background. So as you're going through the cards, okay, the bookshelf. So the, the bookshelves are out. The bookshelves are out. So now we got, oh, and a tiger was out. So now we're down to two suspects. We flip over the next one. It's the forest. So this one, first one to touch the guy, the, uh, the koala bear with the mustache would have won that game. Did you follow that one? <laughs> yeah, I did. No, I, and I guess even I know uh, I talk fast. <laughs> a little. No, I know we're flying through these. So again, some deductive reasoning, even paying attention to details. I'm all, it kind of reminds me a little, like guess who, a little right. bit as far mm -hmm. as paying attention to some of the details of, of the characters. So no, that's good. And uh, again, the name of that one was Sherlock's Express. This is a blue orange right. game. Blue blue orange makes great family games. If, if you're ever looking for great games, blue orange is probably one of my Top top for family games. They just make some fun. They they made that Doctor Eureka. They make this. They make QBs. They they make a really a lot of you know fun family games. They're they're pretty much a lot of award winners in the family game section. Yeah, and yeah. If you've heard your name, the name has come up a few times already this morning. So that, that's perfect. So I guess yeah, I wanted to uh, you know make sure we're honoring the time a bit too. Uh, as we kind of progress into some older children, uh, Joel. So yes. uh, kind, of, kind, of, kind of getting, you know, solidly into called the middle school, junior high years, uh, as far as uh, you know, progressing uh, up the ladder. Yes. Well, you know, like I said, these games, they might say six and up, but they, they're just great family games, thinking right. games that the whole family, I mean, even teenage kids really love a lot of these, these, these brain games like this. This one, are we ready for the next one? Yep. This one is a brand new game by Blue Orange. Came out this year. It was runner up for game of the year. This is the first of the kind that I know. This is a co op. Oh, I'm missing one. One tray. Um, this one, you have cupcakes. And underneath the cupcakes, there are six, five cupcakes. Just need one more. That's okay. I'm going to use, I'll use this. So you have an extra piece here. So what happens is you flip over a card. Let me get this here. You flip over a card and you're working together to make this card on yours. So I have to get my cupcakes over here and you have to get your cupcakes over here. Mm -hmm. This kind of reminds me of the Tower of Han Hanoi. It's a, it's a wood puzzle that we sell, which is it's a single player. But what happens is in order to get the cupcake here, you have to get all the cupcakes there. You only thing is you can never put a big piece, a small piece on top of a big piece, but you can put a big, big piece on top of a small piece. So in order to get that there, and you may use one of, um, and I'm not going to do this right. I believe <laughs> uh, somehow messing it up. There we go. Um, To get that all over there. Uh. <laughs> so if you were playing with someone else, you can only, right, we're, only we're one both, person can use the middle at a time. Right. One person can use the middle at a time. So you're cooperating. So what happens is eventually you get them all over there and I get mine all over there, but working together. So that was just puzzle number one. You got a timer. Right. And now you go to puzzle number two. We're trying to get both pink one's over here and we're telling them hey send a pink one here send a blue one here because you're gotcha. only using one you can't put two on the middle so i'm taking yours you're taking mine and we're exchanging it to get two pink ones here a yellow um, an orange one and a yellow here but you have to keep in mind the pieces that are underneath you have to keep trying to figure out how to keep those underneath plus have those pieces out when you're not communicating right, you're going to end up with the wrong pieces, and then you're going to have to start all over to unbury that little orange piece, which we've done plenty of times, <laughs> and start all over trying to get that piece there by going back and forth. Yeah, fun. And who doesn't like cupcakes either? Right. Who doesn't like? <laughs> yeah. And what, what was the name of this one? Cupcake Academy. Cupcake Academy. And again, you said it's brand new and was runner up for Toy of the Year this year, correct? Yep. Runner up for Game of the Year. It, it, it's won some awards, but we, we belong to Astro. Astro is the, the best. You know, it's, it's, it's for specialty stores like ourselves that, you know, 
a lot of these games will come out and they'll have um uh I forgot what I was gonna say now. <laughs> uh, a lot of these games will come out and you know they 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 specifically sell to the uh, specialty stores, but you know, eventually the big box is going to say, oh, that was a great game a couple years later, and then they get them out there. I have one more here, but I can always grab more. I'm, I'm pretty efficient like that if we need more. This one is a great teenage game. I love this game. And actually, we played with a four-year-old. We just have to read the cards to them because they get, they're all pitcher cards. So what happens is they are a bunch of pitchers. So everybody gets five cards, and it's a race. So this one's called Slapsy. And I'm pretty good at it because I do a lot of victory dances with my customers. So they are two sided and they got a bunch of pictures on there. So what happens is you get the cards, you flip it over, and it says, often found in a garage. So you look through your pieces and you say, a ladder can be found in a garage. Next thing you know, you flip it over, two syllable animal. So you look for a two syllable animal and squirrel, squirrel, right? Yeah. <laughs> so you keep going back and forth, which you're going to try to figure out who can get rid of the cards the fastest. You know, gotcha. sometimes you're going to have arguments on it. You know, used in a sport, someone put down a uh, stroller. Ah, come on. Sure enough, don't Google. Hey, in Wisconsin, sure enough, there was a stroller. Uh, <laughs> there's a stroller race where you got to you got to put the kid in the stroller, buckle him up and, and right. run down the block. And you know, it's, it's a pretty fun copy. You know, we learn stuff as we're playing. <laughs> Uh, they're bringing tech into it, though. That's cheating. Yeah, that's pretty good. <laughs> uh, and uh, Slapsy, you said was the name of that one? Yeah, Slapsy. Um, great game. They actually um, – such a great game. They actually came out with a second piece on it. Um, so there's nine pitchers on each side. Um, really great. Um, gets, the, gets the whole family involved. You know, you can play with two to ten players. I mean, it doesn't really matter. Um, but it's a great family game. It's fast because, you know, sometimes the extension fan and some of the younger kids, they want to get back to their phone. But once they start playing and once they start realizing, hey, this is a really cool game, you know, they, they start playing and having family fun. Yeah, perfect. Perfect. Well, thank you. I know we, we ran through a lot of games there. Did I hear you say that that was all you had queued up for us this morning? Well, I got more. I, Amy, uh, my friends, is, my, uh, bringing more over as I go. Okay. Yeah, let's uh, I think we, let, let's look at two or three more uh, here to kind of wrap up. I know we can do this all day. Your, your story is full. <laughs> of so. This one is called Solitary Chess. Okay. Uh, most people say it's adult, but I'll tell you what, there's some five-year-old comes in here and beats me in chess almost all the time. So I'm not... I'm not saying who could be who. What's the tales? What could say? So what happens on solitary chess? It tells you where to put the chess pieces. So this is puzzle number one. It's very easy. So you put the chess pieces on the board. And now you have to eliminate. You have to eliminate every time you go. So if you have all the pieces, I don't see it like that. Yep. So in order to see this. So the correct way to do this would be, you know, if you try taking this one, they, those two can't take each other. So what happens is if you think about it, the pawn takes it, the pawn takes it. Well, this one actually took me 15 minutes on because I forgot the pawns go this way. But as you go through the puzzles, you'll see this one has six pieces. So you have to eliminate five pieces with five moves. So every time you move, you have to eliminate. So it's teaching you how to think two, three, four moves outside the, you know, outside the box because it's not all just one piece it could be this one moving then this one moving then this one moving it gets really tight my best chess players love this game um it's a great teaching tool to teach how to play chess um i've actually brought this with me on vacation i was playing i i was interrupted in my game because people said oh, i've never seen that can i try it and sure enough you know people are playing my game yeah. <laughs> but i'm supposed to be enjoying it but that's you know <laughs> oh, that's great that's what was the name game. of that that's called solitaire chess. Just solitaire chess. Okay. So, yeah, certainly a, a good chess trainer. And then, again, all of the benefits that come with chess. And and have you seen a, a spike in interest of uh, people coming in with the popularity of, uh, was it Queen's Gambit, the show that uh, just made its, uh, you know, spike on, on Netflix? <laughs> Abs absolutely. Um, we've had a guy come all the way down from Humble Park yesterday just for the chess pieces. He's like, oh, I've been looking for chess pieces and no one has them. And I'm like, I, I have them. I usually sell them with the board, but I do sell them separately. Um, and then another guy, actually, yesterday, yes, the guy came in there for magnetic chess. 
okay. because his daughter was gone. Oh, she wants to go. She wants to go across the street. And she wants to bring my nice set out there. So they because I just gonna get this one that way. I all the pieces stay. It holds up into the box. It's nice for travel. And then we you know we do have a couple travel chests where the the, the top stays on it and, and it's handcrafted. We got so many the abstract games. You know when they come in here. So when you when you beat somebody when you're playing chess and you're always beating somebody that person's never going to want to play you again. Or like, all right, I'm going to play someone until I get a little bit better. The map track games, you know, I do have, you know, we're going to talk about on the adult session, but I have maybe 10 abstract games that are double thinkers like chess where it's a little more even because, you know, this person hasn't been playing for 20 years and this guy's right. just learning how to play, you know, so it just makes it more fun, you know, when you're, you're everybody's enjoying the game. <laughs> yeah. Perfect. So again, solitary chess and, uh, good to, to kind of help develop younger chess players, but then a good training tool for uh, more developed uh, chess players as well. Yes. Perfect. This one is called My Laser Maze. So this my one actually maze. has a laser. I don't know if you can see it or not because it's in there. So what happens on Laser Maze is it tells you, it gives you 80 challenges or 60 challenges. I can't remember offhand, one of the two. And what happens is it tells you to set it up the way it is. So I know my target goes here, but it doesn't say it's got a question mark on it. So it doesn't say which way it goes. Then it says to put one purple one here and that one's face like that. And one purple one here, but this purple one says it's the target. So somehow, and it says on top of here, I have to add one more purple. So what happens is I have to get my laser to bounce off of every mirror to hit a target. So the correct answer for this one, and it's very easy because it's number one, is to turn my target towards that mirror, turn this mirror, so if it ricochets off this mirror, off of this mirror to hit my target. I push my button, boom, and you can barely see it, but the red light's lighting up on my target. Eventually, you're gonna have to go through hoops. <laughs> you're gonna have to do two-sided mirrors. One side is gonna hit on this side of the mirror, and then you're gonna have to hit the other side of the mirror. These is where I had a little struggle. These split the laser. So not only does it go through, but it shoots and curves it. So now you're hitting two targets, which makes it interesting. But towards the end, you're using three targets. So not only do you have, you know, have to figure out where to put all the pieces down. So this one's a little more, a little more advanced. What happens is you have all of these and you have to add one, two, three purple and a green. Plus you have a blocker that doesn't do anything. You just can't put a piece there. Then you have to get every mirror and every piece to function along with the laser. Great game. Another one I brought with me on vacation. I had this game before we even opened the store. Just love, you know, the thinking games. You know, they're, yeah. they're just so great. That's fantastic. And again, that one's called Laser Maze. Correct? That one's called Laser Maze. Okay. No, that's great. Yeah, I don't know. I haven't been keeping account. But man, this is, this is great. We've seen so many games. I guess this one, you know, really uh, got me thinking. And, and I don't know if you've specifically shown anything that – you know, kind of STEM related, but specifically, you know, towards kind of the elements of coding and, and helping, uh, you know, train some of that. Is, is there anything you would recommend? Uh, you know, because th that's certainly a trend, right? We were, you know, we want oh, yeah. to introduce kids to coding and some of these, uh, you know, software technology concepts. Yep. So I got three different coding games. If we have time, I can show them to you. Um, my first one is called Color Code. And uh, I'm going to... Um, so on color code, what happens on color code, you have all these plastic pieces with different colors and different shapes on it. So what happens on this, this one has a hundred challenges. So it's five and up. So the brain, you know, working, mm -hmm. um, what happens is you get all the pieces and it gives you a book and tells you, I don't know if you can see it on here. I don't have the demo out on time, but it shows you the piece of what we want to look. So you're going to be overlaying these tiles to make it look exactly like the picture. It might start off with just two pieces. It might start off with four pieces, but eventually you're gonna get the code. So here's a better look at the book. So let's look at puzzle number one. I mean, five-year-old too. So what you do is you go through all your pieces and I say, okay, I need the red piece and I need the, oh, there we go. So these two pieces trying to make this. So what happens? I put my red piece down first, put the yellow piece on top and I match the picture. Eventually you get to something like this more expert. So now you have to figure out how to get 
and I'm going to do this somehow. <laughs> Woohoo! <laughs> so, so again, it's coding. It's back on each other. It's it's right. a great little game. Starts off. It's five years old. Learning how to code without like you know electricity or anything like that is is great for that age. You know, it's one of our favorites. Um, also, Codemaster. Okay. So that one's for five and up. Next one is going to be for seven and up. And that one's called Codemaster. So this one is coding. So it's eight and up. So this one has 60 levels. And they made it made it look like a little Minecraft. So it kind of attracts right. to that age. You know, and so it's, this one is problem solving too. So what happens is it gives you... First, you get a map. There's different maps in here to tell you how to get your sideboard to the entry, to the exit, to exit your sideboard out. So we start on, let's start on map one, if I could find number one. Ah, map one. So map one comes with um, your first puzzle. So your first puzzle says it's two red and two green. So you see different lines on here. So you're going to use two red and two green. If I could put this down. This is your entrance, and it says your entrance or your exit goes on number five. So I put that on five again because it's like the Minecraft, so the kids love it. They put the guy on number three. So it also tells you two red and two green. So now you're going to have to code it in order to get your sideboard out. So what happens is you get a scroll map. So you get your scroll map, and then you know it's four. So now you have to put on there. Which four do I get to go to make it go out? So if I'm looking at the thing, if I go red, and I have to use all four, so I'm going to go, <laughs> I'm going to try a different way. So it's green and red. So where would, how would I do this? Green, red, green, red. So green, red, green, red is the code. So I look, mm -hmm. flip over the page and the back of here. It will tell you that I coded it correctly. So eventually, you'll see these little crystals, and the crystals will be on certain numbers. So as you're coding, you have not only you have to code it because there's more colors than just green and red. There's blue. So the scroll gets tougher, and then this. I'm sorry, I should do this first. Um, as you're going, you have to pick up the crystals as you go through it before you get out. Scroll gets still more difficult. The maps get more difficult. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so you're learning how to code, again, without any use of any computer or anything like that. There's so many different variations of this. Kids love it. Parents love it because they're actually taking the time to learn the games. And it's, you know, it's, and it's actually great learning. It's You're educating without, you know, <laughs> educating, I guess. <laughs> right, right. So again, Code Master, and then the other one was Color Code. So uh, again, wrapping up yes. with specifically some games and help teach some coding software concepts. So Joel, thank you. I know we've uh, that was uh, a long list, and we're, we'll make sure we, we get that uh, overlay <laughs> with the video. But I appreciate you taking the time to you know share some games, uh, you know, more for that younger audience today uh, on the seventh. Uh, so next Monday, we're going to take a look at games for kind of that older, you know, consider it still a family audience, uh, but, you know, more geared towards some adults and problem solving. Uh, I guess, tell us, you know, we mentioned at the, at the front of the hour about Mindbenders, puzzles and games. You've been open for about four years. You know, you're the emerging business of the year from uh, ISBDC, the E-Day Awards again. Uh, but where, where can folks find you? You're located in Whiting, uh, but how, how can we find you in Whiting? We are on 119th Street in Whiting. So Mind Madness Puzzle Games, 1438 119th Street, right across from City Hall. The bakery's two doors down. Um, great little walkable town. It's it's so many things going on in town. And if you're if you've ever not ever been to Whiting, come out to Whiting. Um, we're right by the lakefront. We have a beautiful park to go through when it's open with I think a little flooding with the high waves. But again, all, all ages, brain games. We start at zero months and we go all the way up to as old as you can get. <laughs> yeah, perfect. And, and specifically for this holiday season, 
uh, you know, I guess the holiday season in general, right? Everyone wants to, to get there and buy some games, but it, you know, we are uh, in a year where there's maybe some limitations or, you know, folks aren't as comfortable coming into a store. I guess to explain a little bit how, how we can engage, you know, to shop maybe curbside or, you know, what are your hours as far as visiting the store? Sure. Our hours are uh, during the week, it's 1030 to 630 Monday through Friday and nine o'clock to six o'clock on Saturday, 11 to four on Sunday. Um, we are doing, so we're personal shoppers. A lot of stuff in my store, if you've noticed the show, the show um, you probably haven't heard of a lot of these things or seen a lot of these things. So we become personal shoppers. So if someone comes in, I got a six-year-old girl or nine-year-old boy, you know, we try to match the person. Does he like cars? Does he like animals? No, does he play with his family? Does he play with his friends? We try to match that personality. So we're doing curbside pickup. You know, and if, when, when I have time, I do call everybody back that leaves a message. Uh, we could talk over the phone. We could do curbside pickup. You could pick up through my window, if you know, through my door, if you feel that safe. Um, we are doing personal shopping. Uh, we open at 1030 during the week. I've had ladies, hey, can I, can I come in at nine o'clock? Me and my friend want to come in there. We, we're just not feeling safe about going to the stores. Absolutely. We ask people to sanitize on the way in. We, we everywhere, everybody, we ask everybody to wear a mask. We were constantly wiping down our toys and our, our games you know, we just want to make everybody, you know, feel safe. And we like everybody to shop small, you know, this, when you shop small, you know, you're not going to the big box and, you know, kind of, you know, brings the town, keeps the town alive. You know, you don't see a bunch of closed up businesses out there, you know, cause right now it is tough with the COVID and stuff like that with, yeah. with people, you know, just want to shop online. We, we don't have online. We, we, we try to give you that in-store experience. Um, sometimes when we can, uh, sometimes we're a little busy and we can't do it, but, we like to make everybody coming in here saying, wow, that was a great store and, and intrigued to come back and, you know, get their next brain game. Perfect. Yeah, thank you. So, again, Mindbenders Puzzles and Games in downtown Whiting. Uh, we look forward to, to hearing from Joel uh, and uh, his co-owner and, and partner in, in crime here, uh, Amy, uh, who's been behind the camera today. So to call her out, uh, I appreciate both of you uh, taking the time to, to join us today. Uh, and we'll, we'll look forward to some more games uh, next week. And, and again, this was a great lineup of, of games uh, you know, for a younger audience today. And so th thank you both. Thank you. Thanks for having us. We appreciate it.